Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy with Cyclo Bros. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at the top 10 most aggressive South American cichlids. Some of my favorite cichlid species are South American, but there are some of them that can be very aggressive, so it's really important to know which ones those are so that you could set that cichlid tank up with the most chance of success. So, let's dive right in. So it's important to keep in mind that this list is only South American cichlids. There are a lot of Central American cichlids that tend to be more aggressive, and in general, I would say there are more aggressive Central Americans than South Americans. Things like your Dovi, your Paracromis with your Jaguar cichlids, your Red Devils, Jack Dempsey's, Convicts, Firemouse, Salvinis, all of those are Central American cichlids that can be pretty aggressive, but this list is specifically with South American cichlids, so let's get into number 10, starting with the Chocolate Cichlid. So you may be thinking, wait, the Chocolate Cichlid isn't that aggressive, well, you might be correct most of the time, but there can definitely be some rogue individuals. And when you get one that has that personality, that aggressive nature, it really can destroy a tank. When we grew up, our family had a 40 or 55 gallon tank, I can't remember, but it had a chocolate cichlid in there and it would kill any fish that we put in with it. And that might have been due to the tank size being a little bit too small, but also just having that individual that was very aggressive. The chocolate cichlids we have kept in recent years have been pretty peaceful, including the one I had in my 180 for a long time. He didn't pick fights with any other fish and he kept to himself. Having the big tank size along with the South American cichlids that are kind of equal in size or just slightly smaller, all of those things contribute to having more success when keeping a big cichlid like the chocolate that could be aggressive in the wrong environment and tank setup. And then coming in at number nine on the list is one of the most aggressive geophagus species, the Steindachneri. This is also called the red hump earth eater as the males will get that hump on its forehead, whereas the females, like the one I have in my 180 here, is not going to get that hump. It might have a little bit of red coloration, but it will still be a beauty with that yellowish brown base and green and black colors throughout the body. But I do find them to be one of the most aggressive geophagus. The Steindachneri here definitely claims the most territory in the 180 of any of the other cichlids in this tank. And I do think they're a little more bark than bite, but because they are so feisty, they chase away other fish, and they even pick on some of the bigger fish in my tank, I would put them at number nine, just ahead of maybe the most aggressive geophagus, the Brazilianzas. So number eight, we have the Brazilianzas, and I've actually heard stories from multiple people that have kept the Brazilianzas that said it was the most aggressive cichlid they have ever kept, and it killed every fish in their tank. I personally did not find mine to be super aggressive. It got along with some of those mid-sized Central and South American cichlids just fine, and as the males mature, they are truly stunning with that pearl, turquoise and green color shimmers throughout their body. They almost resemble a green tear, but because there are individuals that become so aggressive, especially adult males that are breeding, it made the slot just ahead of the Steindachneri for me. Again, the Brazilianzas isn't a totally aggressive cichlid, and most of you will be just fine as long as you have that 75 gallon tank or larger for them, and you keep them with appropriate tank mates. Adult males do get pretty big, one of the biggest of the geophagus species, so you don't want to put them in with any small tetras or barbs or community fish as adults will likely eat or kill them over time. But in general, you should be just fine keeping the Brazilians this. Hopefully you don't get one of those ultra aggressive individuals. And coming in at number seven on the list is probably the most subjective. It could be much higher for some people or much lower for some, and that is the Oscar. The Oscar is one of the most widely kept cichlids in the hobby because it has that awesome personality great colors and patterns, and they're just one of the best cichlids to keep because it just feels like they know you, and it's truly a wet pet. But if you talk to 10 people that kept Oscars, probably half of them would say theirs was ultra aggressive, or the other half say that they're completely peaceful. And I think with Oscars, it really depends on the one that you have and the tank size that you have set up. I would say in general, Oscars will be just fine and peaceful if you have a tank of 125 gallons or larger, and you're not keeping small fish with them. If you're keeping an Oscar in a 75 gallon tank or less, there's way more opportunity for that to go wrong with the Oscar just needing more space, maybe getting bored and going after tank mates. And also if you put any small fish in with your Oscar, whether they're peaceful or more aggressive, that Oscar is probably gonna eat them over time. 
the rule of thumb is if it can fit in the Oscar's mouth, it probably will go in the Oscar's mouth. And that's why I only have some of those medium to larger South American cichlids in with my Oscar right now. He's totally fine and content. He's the tank boss, but he doesn't fight anyone. He's very calm and peaceful most times. And I think as long as you properly keep an Oscar, especially with that tank size and tank mates, they're not going to be aggressive most times and you should be just fine. And then number six on the list is one of our favorite all-time cichlids, and that is the Green Terror. And Green Terrors get a pretty bad rap because of their name having terror in it, but both the True Green Terror and the Gold Psalm have been pretty peaceful in our experience. We did keep one for about five years, and we had it in with a Jack Dempsey, a Convict, Firemouth, Salvini. It got along really well with some of those mid-sized Central and South American cichlids, and in general, I think they get a bad rap because they aren't ultra aggressive. Of course, there are the individuals that can be very aggressive, and some of them, like the Oscar, might have one that can't have any tank mates at all, but I think in general, you'll be able to keep them as long as you have a pretty big tank. And I think a big thing to keep in mind with the Green Terror is to avoid breeding. When they are protecting eggs or fry, they are so aggressive that they might wipe out anything in the tank. So maybe avoid getting a male and female and you should be just fine. It's truly one of the most stunning species out there. And I actually really like the Gold Psalm, the one with the orange fins. And I think we'll definitely get more green tears here very soon. And then coming in at number five on the list are peacock bass. And we kind of grouped all the different species of peacock bass into this category here. Some of them could be a little more aggressive, but all of them get to be a pretty impressive size. And just with that sheer size alone, you can't really keep smaller fish with them. They might get eaten. And things like the Tamenzis bass, for instance, get so big that they can really attack and kill anything in the tank if they want to. Luckily, a lot of the peacock bass tend to be pretty reserved and shy. But if you do get one of those that are a little more rogue and just want to attack something in the tank, it can be really tricky trying to keep them and managing that aggression when it comes to its tank mates. Some of them are truly beautiful species, but just due to that size and the need to be territorial, you do need a very large tank to keep them. And that's why they are coming in at number five. And then number four on the list is another group of cichlids, and those are the pike cichlids. And some of them are much more aggressive than the others. For instance, the Zebrina pike, and the striped pike cichlids are definitely pretty mean and can be very aggressive. They also get pretty large, about 12 to 16 inches in length, and they can be just very, very aggressive in your tank. And they almost just look mean to me, but you can find some species that are less aggressive, like the dwarf pike, the zingu pike might not be quite as aggressive, but in general, they will be pretty feisty. They're shaped basically like a torpedo, and they can shoot through the water and attack any other fish in its tank if it wants to. But they are beautiful fish nonetheless, especially the Zebrina pike. I love that fish with the red coloration on its body. I think we'll definitely go with a Zebrina pike in the future and I can't wait. So as we get into the top three on the list, these guys are super aggressive and I think kind of separate themselves from what we've walked through so far on the list. But coming in at number three is the Mesoherius gephyrus. This species is a close cousin to the Red Terror, which is another aggressive cichlid. But the Gephyrus is a very aggressive fish that's pretty rare in the hobby, but it has been kept more in recent years. And this footage here is from DWS Darius. He's another awesome fish tuber. Go check out his channel. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But he has this massive tank with peacock bass and the Mesoherus Gephyrus. And he has said that it is one of the most aggressive fish in his tank that he has kept. And that really coincides with a lot of what other fish keepers say. If you go on forums, you look up any research about these fish, you'll see how aggressive people say they are. And like I said, it's a very rare one, so we haven't personally kept it. But because of all those anecdotal stories, we just felt like we had to put it high on the list. It's an awesome looking fish with that green and turquoise coloration. And it gets really big, just like the Red Terror. And let's go ahead and talk about that one. At number two, we have the Red Terror, which is the Mesoherus feste. So it's another Mesoherus species. And the Red Terror is a little more commonly kept or widely known. And the male Red Terrors get really big, about a foot and a half in length, whereas the female gets about a foot in length with bright red and black stripes. They're stunning fish. I'm definitely going to be keeping Red Terrors soon. That's a big hint at coming projects. <laughs> but the red terror is such a beautiful fish, but because they are so aggressive as adults, 
you probably need to keep them solo or in a mated pair. Otherwise, they're probably gonna pick on any tank mates over time. Even if you have something that's 300 gallons or more and you have other big cichlids with it, it might be fine for a little bit, but they can snap just like that and go after any fish in the tank. They're super aggressive. And I think when I do keep them, they'll probably just be in a tank on their own. And because they get so big, that tank has to be big. So it's a lot of tank space to dedicate to just one or two fish, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion because of that awesome color, that personality, and that aggressive nature. It's just a really cool fish to keep and I can't wait. So coming in at number one is probably not a surprise, especially if you know much about South American cichlids, but it is the Umbi cichlid. The Umbi is the king of South America in my opinion. It is one of the biggest cichlids that you will find. It has some awesome color as an adult. The adult males get almost two feet in length. They're massive fish. They kind of rival the Dovi, which is a Central American cichlid, but the Umbi has those awesome colors. I think you definitely have to keep it solo or in a mated pair similar to the Red Terror. This one I'm showing here is a pretty young Umbi, only about six or seven inches, and it'll probably double or triple in size. And even at this size, you could just tell it looks mean and it's in a tank on its own for a reason. And we saw this one at our local fish store and talked to the manager and he said just how aggressive this umbi can get even at a young age. But here are a few pictures of the umbi as they grow and you can just see that sheer size and girth and the teeth. It is just a truly impressive fish, but you probably need to keep them solo in my opinion. I do think it would be a really rewarding fish to keep as kind of that wet pet and just have one of the most aggressive South American cichlids in your home. It would be pretty impressive. So that does it for our top 10 list of the most aggressive South American cichlids. If you've had any experience keeping these fish and running into aggression issues, let us know about it down in the comments section below. And if you agree or disagree with some of the choices on our list, we always love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.